about that. <laughs> yeah, man, it's uh, it's dope. It's dope. Natasha, uh, Majid, what's up? What's good? What's good? What's good? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. And uh, I like to start right on time. Oh, yeah, continue. We're, we're just muted, everybody. Um, so we're going to get going, man. All right, Bill was good. Happy New Year, man. Um, <clears throat> all right. So tonight, we talk about FHA. Um, FHA. 203 loans, 203K, excuse me, FHA 203K loans. And so some people, uh, like Natasha, who is a realtor, might already know about FHA loans. She, she's a pro, right, Natasha? Um, she's slanging FHA loans, slanging them. Um, but um, uh, some of us uh, are not as knowledgeable as her, and uh, so we want to go over some of the basic stuff. Uh, about FHA loans and FHA 203K. And then we're going to slide right on in how we can use this to our advantage um, as wholesalers. But you have to know the basics um, beforehand. So number one, FHA, Federal Housing Administration. Okay. So Federal Housing Administration. Um, most people have heard of an FHA loan. Um, not as many people have heard of an FHA 203K loan. But first and foremost, FHA loan, number one. Um, this is a loan that was uh, um, kind of created by the federal government. And believe it or not, even though we call it, we said FHA loan, it's not actually a loan from the government, okay? So these things that we're gonna be talking about, I hope you guys can either have really good memories or, or take down notes. Because when you talk to um, clients, and you're gonna you're gonna know why this is important. When you're gonna to talk to clients, you have to kind of be knowledgeable. You can't um, be telling them some nonsense and making some stuff up, right? So you want to know what you're talking about. So it's not the uh, federal housing, um, you know, uh, um, authority or association. It's the Federal Housing Administration, right? And they created these FHA loans um, so that people could get into um, mortgages um, that might not be able to get into it, okay? And what it is, is not an actual loan, but it insures the loan. Once again, it's not an actual loan, but the FHA, the government, insures the loan. So you might have a bank that meets all the guidelines, because that's a whole other thing about all the guidelines that the banks need to meet, or, or the lender. Um, as long as they meet those guidelines, they are allowed to participate in an FHA loan, okay? Now, what that means is that loan is insured, and how that is insured is through a mortgage insurance premium, or MIP, okay? So this mortgage insurance premium is tacked on to the loan, all right? So this is just FHA now. We're going to get FHA, just FHA for right now. So this mortgage insurance premium, what's going on, Sib? What's going on, Kat? Is tacked on to the, the balance of the loan, all right? And this mortgage insurance premium, or MIP, is something that is an annual thing. So some of you might have heard of PMI before, right? Um, if, if you get a house and you don't have enough equity in it, you don't have to put enough down payment on it, they charge you private mortgage insurance. Well, this is essentially the same thing, but through the federal government, okay? And it's an annual thing, all right? But for your first time, why you need to know this is because when they come to the closing table, this is going to be tacked on to that balance. So if your house, if you're selling your house for $100,000, it's gonna be $100,000 plus the, P, the MIP, okay? And we're going over exactly what that is, all right? Um, the FHA put this stuff together, um, again, so we can get, so people can get into the loans. Now, one of the things that a lot of people um, think is that it's, um, it's only for first-time home buyers. So this is important for you guys to know because if you have someone who's not a first-time home buyer, but you have a perfect house for them and they're giving you this thing, oh, I'm not a first-time home buyer, but it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter whether or not you're a first-time home buyer or not, if you're your first, second, third, or your 30th, okay? There are some guidelines that need to be met, but you can, you can, you can have owned uh, other property. Okay. Before. Okay. One of the, one of the myths, myths that exist 
is that there is an income limit, right? So some people say, oh, I make too much money. There is no too much money for an FHA loan, okay? You don't need, you can make a million dollars a year. Um, as long as you meet the other requirements, then you're good to go, okay? Um, so the um, one, one other one is the, is, um, oh, the credit limit. So some people say, I, I, don't, I don't have um, good credit. Um, my credit, credit is, is really bad. Well, that, that is, you know, you could have uh, bad credit, but you can get approved through an FHA loan um, between, you can write this down, 500, your credit score can be between 500 to 579. This is 2018, so we'll see, wait to see what happens and changes in 2019. But between 500 to 579 with, with, with 10% down. Okay, 580 and above. Okay, you can you will pay three and a half percent. Okay, so 500 to 579, 10 percent down. 580 and above, three and a half half percent. Now this is the government. Um, we we all know that um, it can change. Um, rules can change. It used to be three percent uh, at some point. Um, it's three and a half percent. Um, things can change, but that's what it is right now. Um, so like I said before, the MIP the mortgage insurance premium is tacked onto the end of the loan. And right now, as of two was well, of the 2018 standards, um, no matter how much equity you have in there. Okay. So just understand what I'm saying with this is that conventional loans, if you didn't have enough equity, right. If I think it's like 30% equity, well, I guess it depends on the lender, but, um, they would make you put PMI down or private mortgage insurance. Okay. Um, and after you hit a certain equity point, so let's say the lender's position is, um, um, is, uh, you know, you need to have 30% right of equity. Let's say you hit that 30% equity mark with a normal lender, not a FHA. Okay. Um, with a normal lender, then that PMI comes off. Okay, you no longer have the PMI anymore, which means your mortgage payment goes down, right? So in a mortgage payment, it's called PITI, um, uh, Principal Interest Taxes and Insurance, okay? So if you knock off that PMI, once you get that 30%, with a normal lender, your mortgage payment would go down, right? Your total payment. But with an FHA loan, it never goes down. No matter how much equity, you can have 99% equity um, you can only owe a thousand dollars on your house and you're still going to be paying the MIP. What is the MIP percentage currently right now? It is 1.75%. So remember that goes on, that gets tacked on to the balance of the loan. So if your house, um, is, if you're selling a property to a, an FHA buyer for a hundred thousand dollars, it's now going to be a hundred and one thousand seventy five dollars so you want to add on 1.75 percent make sense so why is that important because we need the house to appraise which means the house has to appraise for that amount so if you put it right at the top okay and it just appraises for 100 and it doesn't pay for 101 then you're gonna need to come down on your fee all right you need to come down on your price so you need to know this because it's gonna affect your buyer on the back end, okay? Um, so that's some, of the, uh, the, um, that's some of the basic stuff for the FHA, okay? So now, a lot of people think that the FHA 203K is a separate loan. So I want you to think FHA and then 203K is just the subsection within the FHA guidelines that allows you to use the gov um, a government insured money through your normal loan to do rehabs okay now with this is a whole list of guidelines we're going to talk about some of them um but there's really a lot of them um uh the best bet is to get with someone we're going to talk about that as well but to get with a contractor who is versed um in fha loans um which is not very difficult to do you can find them and or talk with a mortgage 
lender, which we're going to talk about on the end of this conversation on where to go, go find these people. Um, but so there's a whole list of guidelines that need to be met. So we're going to kind of go over um, some of these things. All right. So the FHA 203K, the standard FHA 203K is a loan that basically pretty much is unlimited when it comes to your repairs. Okay. So unlimited FHA 203K is unlimited when it comes to repairs. Remember the 203K is just the repair portion. You got the FHA portion, which allows you to purchase the home and the 203K is what allows you to take money and repair the house. One of the requirements is that the house um, is not currently habitable and or, and or needs, um, needs uh, uh, um, repairs to make it habitable, right? So you can't just buy a, um, an immaculate house with an FHA 203K loan and get the 203K money to, to, to do repairs on it, okay? Just because you don't like the color of the, of the paint, right? That's not gonna fly. But if you need electrical work, if it needs a new kitchen, if it's more outdated, you got a new floor joists that need to be um, done, that is a good candidate for an FHA 203K. Now, just not to make this even more confusing, remember, there's a reason why I said FHA 203K is unlimited because there is an FHA limited 203K, okay? So we're gonna talk about that real quick. The limited 203K, limited 203K is limited up to $35,000 in repairs. But that's something that you need to know. Why is this important? Because with an FHA 203K limited, or streamline, like Bill, Bill said, um, the limited 203K allows you to close within 30 days, okay? There's a lot of uh, mortgage brokers, um, loan officers that can take an FHA 203, uh, limited 203K, and um, if, as long as the repairs are less than $35,000, they can get it done and approved within 30 days. That's a whole strategy in by itself of finding properties that are that fit that that bill okay so if you have the standard fha 203k you can have a two hundred thousand dollar repair as long as it makes sense as long as when you the purchase price plus the rehab as long as that makes sense and it appraises for that it doesn't even have to you don't even really have to have equity in it um they'd like to see a little bit of equity in it but it has to appraise um for let's say if you're going to put in you're gonna buy the house for 50 and it needs $200,000 worth of work, right? So you're all in it for 250. As long as that thing appraises for 250 plus the 1.75, whatever that equals, um, then you're good, okay? So um, 203K limited under 35, it's gonna take 30 days. But the regular FHA 203K, the regular standard one, that is gonna take a minimum if you're good or if they're good and everything is streamlined, everybody gets their paperwork in there, it's gonna take a minimum of 45 days. Most of the time, it's gonna take 60 days. So therein lies <clears throat> the problem a lot of times for wholesaling deals, right? Because um, how, you know, the one of the biggest things that we offer is speed. And so um, you're gonna to have to find, and we're gonna talk about how to find some of these people that want to, that are okay with, um, taking a little bit of time on their, on their loans. Okay. Um, so, uh, you have, again, you have to have approved lender. I'm looking at my, my notes here. Um, uh, you have to include a specific contractor's quote. So you can't just, you, as you a wholesaler, are not going to be able to, um, um, just, uh, say, Hey, yeah, my estimation of this is going to be, you know, $55,000. They're going to want a detailed quote and uh, a contractor that knows how to do that is going to uh, be able to do that and provide that type of quote. There's a lot of things that have to happen. Um, you can't have like wires hanging out. Your railing has to be sturdy. You can't have any cracks or tripping hazards on the steps uh, in the driveway. You can't have a cracked driveway. Like there's a whole bunch of things that, um, that you could probably, well, not probably, I know that you could normally get away with, with a standard uh, loan, but the FHA is not going to, it's not going to fly. You're going to have to fix that stuff. Um, everything else um, is, um, 
um, standard stuff. You don't need your standard paperwork. Um, nothing extra when it comes to that. So now that you kind of understand it, the main things that from a wholesaler standpoint, uh, understanding is that um, your FHA 203K is unlimited on the rehab. Um, as long as you meet the, the debt to income ratio, I think it's uh, 57 and 47, I think is what it is. 47% of your income, 57% of your bills. Um, both of those have to be met. Uh, and this is basically, this is just going off of 2018 standard, it might change. Uh, but main thing you need to understand, 203K unlimited, li the limited 203K or streamlined one, up to $35,000. For that one, you can close within 30 days. For the standard FHA 203K, you are going to look at a minimum of 45 days, most likely, most likely in the 60 day range. Um, so those are the big, big, big things. Now, kind of moving into, now that you kind of understand that, make sure you, make sure you guys go through those notes um, and make sure that you are, uh, you're, you know, at least you have some basic knowledge on what an FHA loan is and, and 203K and how it works. So, how do we as wholesalers utilize this information? What, what do we do? If you guys um, haven't seen, um, you know, the, the, the market starting to slow up, uh, maybe not where you're at, but I can de definitely tell you here in Georgia, it's starting to slow up. Um, good deals are still out there, but what do you do with the deals that aren't being bought? What do you do with the deals that, are, that you know someone can move into and have some equity in? Um, but they don't, um, you know, it doesn't fit your typical wholesale, wholesale deal. So <clears throat> we have a property that is, um, in East point. And so that property does not fit the typical 30% or 25% for that matter. Um, standard deal, right. Um, it was actually a property that I had in the contract a while ago and the guy reached back out, uh, to Daryl actually and uh, said, hey, you know, I really need to sell this house. So we're renego renegotiating down. It was, I think we had it for 72 or something like that. And now I think we're down to like 57, okay? In a matter of a couple of months. So what we're going to do is take that same house. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put it under, uh, we're gonna, um, you know, obviously put it out to our buyers. Um, and, uh, oh, somebody don't, don't let me forget to talk about buyers, uh, what I want to do for this month. Uh, if I forget, if I get to the end and I don't bring it up, someone please put a note, say, hey, don't forget to talk about the buyers thing. Um, and so we're going to put out, uh, put this out to our buyers. And if they don't get it, we're also going to add simultaneously. This is the key because with an FHA 203K, it can take up to 60 days, right? So at the same time, at the same time, I want to also Get it. I also want to also put it out to mortgage officers or loan officers. Okay. So this is what I want you guys to do. All right. I want you guys to research and call some loan officers, some mortgage loan officers, because these people have, they, they, most of their clients are coming in for standard loans. Okay. Most of them are coming in there because they just want a regular, just a regular loan. They want to get the, you know, a regular FHA loan or, a conventional loan and they just want to get their house. They want it to be picture perfect before they move in. Right. That's how most people are, but they are going to have some people that have these champagne, champagne tastes with beer budget money. Right. And for them, they're going to be for them and realtors. There's another person you want to get in hold, a hold of with about this for both of them they're going to be like a thorn in their side because they're going to every house they take them to that they can afford. It's not going to be grand enough. It's not going to be big enough. It's not going to be good enough. Right. And so at that point, these are going to be perfect candidates to say, Hey, why don't we get you a, a fixer upper and get everything um, run to you? You're going to have project management. You're going to have you know, the contractors bids. Everything's going to be there. And guess what? You're going to have to bring the same three and a half percent, the, the, the three and a half percent that you want to bring to this $200,000 house that's already fixed, but you just can't afford it. Um, well, guess what? Now you can bring that into this FHA 203K um, fixer upper and you can get into this property and make it better than the $200,000 house um, because it'll be, everything will be brand new. Okay. And so for a lot of people, um, for a lot of people, that's really, really appealing. Okay. 
So the people that they're going to reach out to is their mortgage officers, their mortgage or loan officers, right? The people that are actually pulling their credit and, and running their, um, running their credit and trying to get them approved. It's in that mortgage officer's best interest to get them approved. That's how they, they don't get paid until the loan is funded. Okay. So once the loan is funded, then the mortgage officer gets paid. So if this person is just sitting in the file and they can't get, they, they, they're not getting the house because they don't, they just don't match up with them or whatever. They need to get them approved. And this 203K is something that they can pitch to them. So what you want to do is you want to contact this effort, this uh, mortgage uh, officer or loan officer. You want to tell them exactly what you do, that you find b below market properties and you find them for people that probably that they already have. These, these loan officers probably already have these people waiting in the winds. They're just looking for, they're just waiting for a property. Okay. So that's number one. I need you to find some mortgage loan officers um, that do this. You might have to call. All of them will know about it. Some of them do it a lot. Some of them do it a little bit, but all of them should know about a 203k loan and know how to structure it. Okay. That's number one. Number two, your real estate agent. By now you guys should have already made some, well, it depends on when you got in the course, but some of you um, should have already started making connections with real estate agents. If you haven't, and let me go back to number one. I need you to try to get at least three mortgage loan, uh, loan officers on your list, right? At least three. Okay, if you can do five, five. I like, I, like, I like having five, but if you can do three, cool, all right? So just call around and just tell three of them what you do, to, you know, and that if they have any people that fit, your, fit the bill, to send them your way because you're always getting properties, okay? Same thing with your real estate agents. You need to have at least five by now that you are dealing with, okay? Five real estate agents that can help you um, sending you properties or sending you clients to say, hey, this person is looking for a fixer-upper. Because they'll tell you, this person is looking for a fixer-upper, right? We can get them qualified with an FHA 203K, a limited or unlimited. Um, they'll let you know. And they'll let you know exactly what they're looking for. The other thing that I need you to do, right, is I need you to start... Uh, I need you, if you already have a contractor, some of you guys have already done properties and flipped properties, so you already have a contractor, you need to make sure that your contractor knows uh, and is up on the FHA guidelines and what they require, okay? Because, uh, you know, your second cousin on your mama's side, um, Uncle Larry or whoever, right, he probably don't know what, what the FHA is requiring and, he, and he's gonna put in a quote and it's going to be all jacked up, okay? And it's going to get kicked back, and that is what drags this process out. It's already going to take you almost 60 days, right, if you do a regular one. So you don't want to drag it out to 70 days because someone doesn't know how to put in, um, input the paperwork and, and send the FHA exactly what they need. So um, after you have those three things, then you pretty much are ready to, uh, to hop into sending people to your properties or sending your properties out. Um, it's really actually pretty easy um, once you get those three things set up because two of the people are already dealing with, like already have clients coming to them. So this is like that, um, this is kind of where you guys want to start to be at, this attraction marketing, right? Where um, your, your sellers and your buyers are coming to you versus you going to them, right? So now you find this property that does not make sense as a wholesale deal. This is, think about, this is, this is what makes this so powerful. You find a property, because they're getting tighter and tighter, you find a property that does not make sense as a wholesale deal. You only got 0.8, you got 20%, right, um, of equity in it after you put the repairs in. Who's buying it? You got 0.85, you only got 15%, you got 0.9, you only got nine, I mean, you only got 10% um, equity. Well, guess what? If you have... Um, if you have these people, these five real estate agents and these five, um, three to five mortgage or loan officers that are constantly getting people coming to them that fit that, that are looking for um, properties that they can fix and flip. Now, now you have, you should have a good amount of people coming to you on a monthly basis for properties that typically you won't be able to, you wouldn't be able to move. Okay. So you now have, a, you have a, a list of people that are coming into you that you can get, that you can get these houses for. So when you find these houses now, what works out, what, what could 
work out is some of these for sale by owner properties. So this is, um, I'm normally not, I'm more normally against for sale by owners just because of my personal experience in the Atlanta market. I know in certain areas like in the, the Midwest, for sale by owners work pretty well from what I've heard. Um, for me out here in Georgia in the Atlanta area, for sale by owners have been nothing but a headache. But um, if a for sale by owner has a property that um, they're selling somewhat of a discount and it still needs some work to make it habitable, and I have five real estate agents and five uh, loan officers that are sending me people over the course of a month that are looking for properties in that area, that might be an, uh, an option for us. That might be an option where we could still wholesale this, this property um, and get uh, and, and be able to make our wholesale. Same wholesale fee, that's, that's the crazy thing. Same or sometimes better. So what I mean by that, let me just show this to you here. Um, Okay, so I, I love doing $100,000 because it's just easy math, right? So our, 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 our um, FHA property, once we fix this thing up, our ARV, everything else is the same, right? So our ARV is going to be 100K, right? And so we got this here, 100K. And so typically we're looking at 0.7 and sometimes some markets 0.65, right? Um, some lenders are willing to do 0.75. So let's say we get this property under contract. Uh, so we're going to put just we'll put contract with our C with the circle around it. For contract for $40,000. Okay. And 40K. So that's what we got under contract for. So our repairs. Okay. Our repairs are going to cost us, let's just say another 50, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, they're going to cost us $30,000, right? So we're already at 70K, so we're already at that 0.7, right? So now, what I can now do, so obviously here we have 70, what I can do as a wholesaler, if I wanted to, right, if I wanted to, because the, the, I, the, the mentality of a person that's doing FHA 203K is not to turn around and take this thing and flip it and make a profit and live off of it and pay bills with it and send their kids, kids to school and pay gas and groceries. That's not the mentality for them. Their mentality is to get into this house and live there and live there for a year, two years, three years, however long they want to live there, maybe for the next 30 years. So if you can leave them with a little bit of equity, because most of the time when people buy, and if you guys don't know this, most of the time with conventional buyers, if you ever bought a house, you're not buying a house with equity in it. Most of the time, if it is equity, it's only like a thousand to five thousand dollars. There's normally not a lot of equity in the home. Normally, you're buying at retail. So if it's appraising for one seventy, you're so happy that you're getting that house for one seventy that you're paying one seventy, right? So here, what I can do now, I can say, take a look at this and say, you know what? I'm gonna leave them where my normally my my wholesale fee might be five thousand or ten thousand dollars. I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to leave them with $10,000 equity. So if I'm going to do $10,000 equity, I can say, all right, well, then my wholesaling fee is 20K. Guess what? So no one cares. Um, the government doesn't care. Why? They're going to fund this loan because at the end of the day, the house is worth 100 and they are only paying for 90. And so it's better in everybody's eyes because the FHA is insuring this loan. Now they have an asset that they're insuring that already has $10,000 worth of equity into it. The homeowner sees $10,000 worth of equity into it. So it seems like a better deal. They're looking at all the other houses that are fixed up that are going for $100,000 and they're paying $90,000. So they're ecstatic about it. They're not trying to flip it and move on. They're just happy that they got that. Now you're also your your wholesaling fee of maybe ten thousand dollars, five or ten thousand dollars, just double, right? So you can see how this can add to your bottom line. So doing understanding this, understanding what FHA two hundred three k loan is, how it works, um, getting um, involved with a mortgage officer or a loan officer that can run these things and do them um, proficiently and quickly. Um, you're going to be able to find, you're going to be able to add 
a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of zeros to your, maybe not a couple of zeros, but at least a zero or so to your, uh, your wholesaling fee and make some extra cash. Now, sellers, most of the sellers that, that are okay with this in the beginning don't know that they're okay with it. What do I mean by that? Remember when in the back in the, in the beginning when I said, when you start pushing your properties out to your regular buyers, immediately start pushing them out to your FHA 203K buyers, right? So the reason why I said that is because you're going to push your property out to your original buyers, your normal buying list, okay? Um, and then that goes through, someone buys it, perfect. Then you ain't got to worry about this. But guess what happens if, and some of you have been through this, right, where the buyer goes through it, everything's good, and then all of a sudden they disappear. And now there's no buyer, right? And now you have to go back to your seller. And now, but it's been 27 days and you have to go back to your seller and say, hey, you know, this is what happened. You know, the buyer pulled out last minute. I think that we can um, get this thing sold. I have someone else lined up, but it's going to take us another 20 to 30 days. And guess what? A lot of buyers will just be like, I'm sorry, a lot of sellers, a lot of sellers will be okay with that because they've waited this long for it. They don't want to just start the process all over with someone else. So if you start this process with your FHA 203K, guess what has happened? You're already 30 days into it. Now you don't have another 60 days. Now you have probably another, another 20 to 30 days before um, this holy matrimony of real estate can be consummated, right? So now we can go ahead and get this thing done because we, were, we kind of took a, uh, a preemptive strike on, on, on getting the FHA side rolling just as fast as we did with our normal buyers. And it hurts nobody, right? Because they all know that they have to put this stuff in and it has to be done quickly. So they're, they're, they understand the game of, um, of, uh, of going through this process and it taking long and possibly the house not being, getting bought. So that's, that's one person. Another good person, another good type, type of person to look for that, does, that is okay with waiting this long. Another good person is um, sometimes these tired landlords. Here's why, right? I'm going through it right now where um, in Georgia, you have to give the uh, tenant 60 days notice, right? Even if they're month to month, okay? My tenants have to give me 30 days notice. As a landlord, I'm held to a higher standard, so I have to give them 60 days notice. That's perfect, right? So if you live here in Georgia, um, uh, Deanna, she, every month she comes out with a new... Um, 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 evictions lists. These are, these are landlords who have properties and are trying to evict their tenants, right? Every, every month she comes out with these. And if you live across the country, there's some way you can get those lists as well. If not, just go down to the courthouse on eviction day and uh, start creating your own list. But these people have to wait 60 days anyway. Where did that come from? Um, these people have to wait 60 days anyway. So um, that's a great person to reach out to because they're going to have to, they're going to have to be waiting on the fence anyway. And then a lot of times the 60 days comes up and it's not exactly 60 days where everything happens. So you have some time where you can actually be pushing these people towards, um, you know, FHA 203K customers. All right. Let me see here. All right. So um, quick recap. Myths. It's not just for first time home buyers. Okay. Um, that's number one. You can also, there's no income limit. All right. If you're doing a local FHA tool, I mean, not a local, a limited FHA tool, three K 30 days or less, most of the time, right around 30 days. Okay. Um, if you're doing, um, um, it's $150 Eddie. Um, so if you're doing, um, standard FHA two Oh three K, um, then it's uh, 45 to 60 days. I'd say, I'd venture to say, I just, you know, bet on 60 days. It's probably a lot, a lot better that you bet on 60 days. Um, so you need a 500 to 579 with 10% down or a 580 or above credit score with three and a half percent down. Okay. They're going to tack on, keep in mind that 
really if this ARV is 100, really, really my ARV needs to be $101,750, I think it is, yeah. Actually, you have to tack on that 1.75, whatever the, whatever it appraises for, you need to also have 1.75% equity into it. Or you can look at it the other way, instead of them having $10,000 equity in this particular equation, they would have 8,250 um, in equity because we'd have to subtract that 1.75. Um, so those things, um, you're going to need to get in contract, contact with the contractor, all right? Preferably maybe have two or three of them that are versed in FHAs. You need to start off right now reaching out for three, to three loan officers that do FHA 203 case. Ask them, say, hey, you know, how many 203K loans come through your, your office across your table? How many people are you putting into 203K loans? How, much of the, how many of them are limited? How many of them are just the standard ones? And what's your time frame on both? Asking those questions. So you want to have three, preferably five. And then your five real estate agents, contact them. This is not a, um, the real estate agents I deal with, I don't just call them one time. Like, uh, you know, I have a relationship with them, right? So I want them to call me. Um, and you need, the only way you can do that is if you consistently reach out to them. So make sure you guys are doing those things. I wanna make sure I'm not missing anything. The limit is under 35K. That is, I think, pretty much about it. Everything else, as far as the guidelines and stuff like that, you don't really need to get into. That's something that the contractors should know how to do um, and um, work on. Just the big thing is that make sure that they have enough, a little bit of equity in there. They don't need to have much, but that's what's really going to entice them to go ahead and close the deal and go to deal with you. And it also is going to obviously give you a chance to put more in, into your bank account. Let me get out of here. Stop sharing. Cool. Uh, anyone know? Um, okay, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm definitely talking about the buyers. But before I get to the buyers, appreciate that, Louis. Uh, before I get to the buyers, does any have anybody have any questions on the tool? Hey, Tommy, this is Latasha. Yep. Hey, what's up? Um, I would just, I guess, want to clarify that if we're working with retail buyers versus investors, cash investors, um, with the requirements from the, the RESPA laws when it comes to working with retail buyers, um, we would have to double close, correct? I, that would be something that I would leave with the mortgage uh, broker and your closing attorney. Okay, um, I'm pretty sure that if you're dealing with retail buyers, um, you're going to have to double you're gonna, close. You're going to have to do a double, uh, your standard um, documents. It's definitely not going to be like a uh, um, a cash or um, private money lender. Right. The reason I say that is because the assignment fee, if there's a federally backed mortgage involved, mm -hmm. no, no closing, no closing can have an assignment fee on the hood. That's why the double close would be requirement to my understanding. So if you do a double, if you do a double close, and I'll have to get clarification on that. If you do a double close, in a case like that, sometimes you're going to have to have um, uh, transactional funding as well. Mm -hmm. um, right. So that's, so that could be an added, an added cost on the wholesalers side. Right. So, okay. All right. Um, can it be done multifamily if they live in a unit? Yes. Um, can it be done multifamily? Oh, um, multi, multifamily up to four units multifamily up to four units um, because FHA is for um, home ownership. So one of the main, one of the main guidelines, why it's better for re why it works for retail buyers for the most part um, is it can't be an investment, can't be purely an investment property. Like you can't buy it and flip it. Okay. You have to buy it and you have to live in it. I believe it's a year that you have to live in it for. Um, so one of the things that, uh, um, uh, one of my uh, frat brothers and, and mentors that actually was on the call, Don, his first property was a triplex in North New Jersey. And he just house hacked it, right? They call it house hacking where he, he got into the house. It was a triplex. He lived in one and rented out the other two. Okay. And so he lived in one, rented out the other two. So if that wasn't, I don't know if that was an FHA 203K. I think it was. Actually, I think it was. 
Yeah, it was. And I, and I, I remember clearly he said it was. Um, where he had to put some work into it, um, but he got it ready. And then he was able to rent out the other two sides while living into the one, and living in one. And he was actually making money from that. So his, his one tenant from one place was paying for all the entire mortgage. The second tenant was putting money in his pocket and then he wasn't spending any money on a mortgage. So he did that for a year, met the FHA guidelines, got out, did, a, did the exact same thing a second time, brought another triplex. So at the end of two years, he now has a place that he's living in and he has five, um, pro well, you know, two properties, but five units that are paying him um, uh, rent, okay? So um, that's just something that you can do. Um, you say multifamily, yes, it can be multifamily, but it has to be less than four units. All right. Anybody else have any other questions? You can just take yourself off mute. Nope, nothing. Cool. You guys are good then. All right, so here's what I wanna do. Uh, can you have, you can just take yourself off mute, man. Can you have two active FHA loans out? No, one at a time. One so, at a time. So, the, so in your example, real quick, you said your frat brother, the following year, he purchased another one. Yes. So that's technically two FHAs that you're he has out, right? Yeah, you're gonna have to refinance it. So you'll refinance the first one into a conventional? Conventional. Gotcha, okay. Good question. Um, I, anybody else? Before we go into the buyers. Uh, nope, I'm about to do that right now if nobody else has any questions. So this is, um, this is more of a, uh, a push um, for, for everyone and also um, to try to work cooperatively once again. It didn't really work out last time, but I wanna to try to make this thing work for as many people as possible. Um, so I, uh, I went ahead and um, let me see if I can pull it up here. Hold on. Let's do, what is it? Can you guys uh, see my screen? Oh, that's right, I didn't share my screen. Hold on. All right, cool. All right, um, make sure this is the right one. Okay, it does. All right, so here, um, here I have, I went out and, and uh, wanted to increase my buyers list, okay? So I believe there's, let me see, how many people are in here? 452 I added to my buyers list, all right? So what I, want, what I want you guys to do is, I want you to always to, to con con consistently, constantly be growing, right? Growing something. And so it's very difficult, especially in the beginning, um, just to try to grow in everything. So this month, starting off the new year, this is the first call of the new year. Um, I wanna spend January increasing our buyers list as a whole, as a group, okay? Like we're, we're concentrating on buyers list. Buyers list, buyers list, buyers list, buyers list. You're gonna hear me for the next couple of weeks, where are you at on your buyers list, okay? So I increased my buyers list by 452 um, people here by using the same stuff that I always tell you guys in list source. Now, not all these people are real buyers. I don't want to, you know, mislead you and think that these are just, you know, everybody here just got, you know, $500,000 in the bank just waiting to be, waiting to spend with me, okay? But um, I am hoping, and time will tell, uh, we got a lot of phone calls to make, uh, 452 of them, I'm hoping that 10%, 10% of them will be um, real buyers, okay? So if I can get a list... Just like I teach, just like I show in, in list source um, of of buyers, 
then I can go ahead and do this exact, I mean, you can do this same exact same thing and add 10% um, of the buyers to your list. So some of them have more numbers than others. So it's probably less than 452. So we have a couple of different numbers. REI Skip is kind of up their game a little bit and they give you a lot of stuff. Look at this, they're giving, this is crazy. So I didn't even look this far, but they have the, um, um, what you call there, the emails there. And so what I would, what I'm gonna do is, um, is start calling these people, emailing these people. What you can do if you don't have a MailChimp or um, what's the other one? I forgot what, um, if someone knows it, just route MailChimp is like an automatic mailer. I forgot the other one. Um, I use MailChimp, so that's why I know that one. Uh, Constant Contact. You guys, it's worth it to go ahead and get, get some of those, that software and start and just literally just copy and paste. You literally all I have to do is just go through this, this whole line and then copy everything, right? Where was it at? I copy this whole line right here. You can do it. Oops, that's not what I want. Copy this whole line and um, add it into my, my list, right? Let's see here. No, it's not working. I'll figure out a way to do it. But there's a way to do it where you can just copy the whole list so you don't have to, um, you don't have to go in, in one by one and do that. You just go ahead and put them all in, into your email filter, and then boom, you got them. Another thing, if you're not doing, um, because uh, text messages are opened up, I think it's 90% more than emails, right? Because you can download something called Slick Text, S-L-I-C-K, text, okay? And so uh, this is good to keep in contact and put on like daily, uh, monthly newsletters and just keep people in, in the forefront of your mind. But if you're gonna send out properties, this is the way to do it. Most of the time, people are going to take, get the text and they're going to look at it. 90% of the time, you have to think, even if you get a text, you won't answer a phone call, right? You're not going to answer a phone call that, um, that you, don't, you don't know, right? That might be the bill collector. Or it might be uh, your ex-girlfriend or something like that, or ex-boyfriend. So you ain't trying to answer it. But a text message, you know that you're still going to open it and at least take a look at it, okay? You might not look at it right away, but you're at least going to look at it. And so... What you want to do with these text messages, and I'm getting better, I'm refining and just learning, right? Especially taking this, this marketing course, is um, even though it looks cheesy, start off with like an emoji, okay? Um, start off with an emoji and maybe a broken house, like the broken house emoji. Everybody seen one of those? If you have an iPhone, you've seen the, the, the house with the little, looks like it has a little broken roof or whatever. Um, and it's just something to grab their attention, right? All, that's all you're trying to do is you're trying to get their attention. Okay, so you want to get their attention and then put your information that you're in there. And it, obviously, you definitely, definitely want in the, as, as much as fluid as possible to put your, um, the pictures that we talk about, the pictures and video link. Make sure you're not sending, um, you know, 40 different photos. Make sure you do like we talk about in the course and upload them into um, whether or not you use Google Docs or Google Photos. I use Google Photos. Put that link there. So they can, when that link is in there, it shows up as a picture of the house, right? Whatever that front picture is, is gonna be the picture of the link. So they're gonna see, oh, little broken house. You're gonna see your message, and then you're also gonna see the, the, the front cover photo of your Google link. They're going to open that. If, if I go through here, all these people, and I get 45 people um, that are really red, real buyers, and I send my messages out to the, them, I'm going to have 45 people that are going to look at that, guaranteed, if they're real buyers, because that's what they do. That's their livelihood. So having a software where you don't have to send out 45 texts individually, like slick text, is, uh, is dope. So um, I would highly encourage that you guys use that so, you're not, uh, so you're not, you don't want to put them all in one group text. Don't do that. That's just um, that's, that's tacky and it's annoying. So I hope that is something that uh, helps you guys out as well. All right. So that's what I wanted to uh, put out for the buyers list. January, January, January is buyers list month. We are increasing our buyers list. Okay. Everybody by that time, by the end of January, um, you guys should probably sit. If you don't have, 
any buyers, then I need you to get to at least 10 buyers. If you don't have any buyers, I need you to get to 10 buyers by the end of January, okay? Um, if you already have some buyers, just try to increase that, man. Just try to increase it. Just try to increase it at least by 10. Add an extra 10 buyers to your list. Um, work tirelessly on that. Make that the, uh, your, um, you know, obviously you want to get in sellers, but make that the, the main mission for this month, okay? Because uh, it's getting tight, man. I'm telling you this because it's getting tight. My buyers that would just buy up everything are now like getting more and more tight. So I now need, I'm realizing it's good though. It's, it's actually a very, very good problem for me to have because now it's forcing me to, um, where everything was just easy, it's forcing me to look for other ways and, uh, and other avenues of selling properties. So um, yeah, so that's where we're going to be at. All right. Um, next Wednesday, next Wednesday, I want to talk about Airbnbs. Um, probably going to have um, um, my man um, Elvis um, talk about his experience with them. I'm going to talk about my little experience with them. Um, but more so about Airbnbs, about how we can still make money. Because I, I have an Airbnb that I'm going to make money, but I'm not wholesaling it. So how do I wholesale my Airbnb? How do I wholesale, not better yet, how do I wholesale a rental, one that I don't own, right? How do I do that? So I don't own the property. Bill owns the property, right? Bill is the homeowner. He doesn't want to sell his property. He just wants to rent it. I'm the wholesaler. How do I get paid off of that? How do I, get, how do I hook up Majid and say, hey, Majid, I got this, this really good um, uh, uh, Airbnb property that's going to make you some good money, um, and, uh, but I don't own the property, right? And you're not going to own the property, but we're going to work together and get, and, and get you into a property that's going to make, make you some money, make you an X amount of percentage on your return or return on your, on your um, investment. So that's what I want to talk about because that is what I'm doing. Um, that is what I'm pushing for my NFL client. It's crazy, right? So the NFL client that has all this money, um, I'm not talking bad about him, but this is typical. This is typical. If you haven't gotten to it, this is typical investor stuff, right? This is typical first time investor stuff. My NFL client, um, con signed a contract for $19.5 million, right? I can tell that because I can tell you that because it's, it's out there. It's not hidden. Um, I'm not going to tell you how much money is in his bank account, but it's in the millions, right? Um, and sat down with him. Yeah, I want to go. I, I want to do some fix and flips. I want to use my own money. I'm talking him out of using his own money. I'm like, don't use your own money, man. It's not smart. Even the, the I know you're rich, but, you know, even people that have more money than you don't use their own money. So how about we use other people's money, get into a flip, then use that money to get you into some Airbnbs and rentals and blah, blah, blah. He was all for it, set them property. And he was like, well, I don't know now. I don't, seems like I'm, you know, I'm kicking out, I'm taking all the risk. And I'm like, well, you know, that's part of real estate investing. You have to take some type of risk. So even though he has all this money and whether or not, if that house, put it like this, his game check, his game check was $350,000 per week, right? The house, including that was only going to, uh, including the, 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 the repairs was only going to be like in the twos. It would have been like a one week's, it would have been like weeks, a week's paycheck. Um, and so uh, I got that, Latasha. That's awesome. So if everybody hasn't seen it, Latasha said, uh, great resources, CPAs, accountants. They always have people coming to them looking for their taxes in order to, they can buy a house. Uh, yeah, tax season's coming up. Tax season's coming up. We're going to talk about that too. That's a, it's a good time for, uh, for lease options. And uh, yeah, tax season is nice. Anyway, um, so, but typical home, first time investor stuff, right? They, like he thinks he wants to do this and then midway through it, we find him a house and now all of a sudden he doesn't want to do that anymore. Even though he was getting uh, over 100% return, right? Off of the money that he was putting out of his pocket, right? He didn't want to do it anymore. He wants to just do Airbnbs. Um, Airbnbs are what's sexy right now. That's what's hot. Um, and uh, it's very, very mainstream now. So a lot of people are not as afraid of it. So how can we profit off of it? We're going to talk about that next week on next Wednesday. All right. So any other questions before we hang up here? Yeah. Hey, Tommy, real quick. I'm going to have, uh, I was, I was doing a, um, I was doing a Bible study with a guy 
and I came in on some really good parts. So I need you to kind of, if you could just do that whole thing over again <laughs> about the, yeah, about um, the everything. If you could just hit everything. that everything part one, one time for the one time. I got you. What's going to happen is, what's going to happen is like the screen will go black, but just stay on for a little bit. I promise I'm coming back. Okay, I'm about to take notes. Nah, I'm just playing. I'm actually about to get on my call right now. Nah, I got, got you. Speak. Oh, real quick, um, Dave, if you guys don't know, Dave has been gracious enough. Um, Dave is a, um, is a um, multi-millionaire uh, drug dealer. So, <laughs> <laughs> Dave's been selling dope hard. But uh, he's been uh, teaching people to uh, not sell dope and been helping people out with their business on the business side of things. Hey. Uh, 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 for a long time, man. So, well, you said wait. Don't say no. I was. I'm actually on another call. About to jump on another call. Oh, okay. So, uh, what what day did you say, Dave? Um, is one specific day? Was it Friday or something like that? Uh, maybe a Friday. It don't matter which day. Let's figure it out. But you guys will have the pleasure of being on our morning calls, Liddy. Um, so y'all guys can get one one per week because I feel like. Everybody just needs some, you know, motivation, even just once per week. I don't know if it's going to be Friday, Monday, something. But we'll jump on Friday. I'll give you a code for, for Friday. All right. So um, we're just trying to add some more value to you guys. It won't, you won't get the full value of his course because you're going to have to pay him for that. But uh, he's, he's nice enough where he's going to allow us um, to hop on once a week and, um, and get, get some value out of there. Uh, just, just being better business people, it's being better in general. So, appreciate you for that. No problem at all. I'm about to hop off right now. I hit you after the call, Tommy. Yes, sir. All right, everybody. Uh, anybody else have any other questions? Yes, no, maybe so. If not, we're going to roll out. Um, Y'all be safe out there. Once again, Happy New Year. Man, let's kill this new year, man. Buyers, buyers, buyers for the month of January. We got buyers everywhere. Buyers everywhere. I want to see some uh, uh, um, some phenomenal growth in that. So, love you guys, man. And, um, man, y'all be safe out there. Bill, don't go out there starting fires and trying to put them out. I know how y'all firemen do, man. Y'all firemen just be so – y'all be itching just to put out a fire, fam. Like, us cops, we just show up, man. We just we deal with enough. Y'all you only get, like, one I'm, 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 now, I'm over there, all that stuff, man. They leave that to the young dudes. Yeah, man. I, I, I hear that. <laughs> all right, man. Well, y'all be safe, man. Y'all be blessed. And have a good one. All right. Peace. Take it easy. Take it easy. Yeah.